Welcome back to Falcons Franchise here in Madden NFL 24. We are 6-2, coming off a couple of really close wins. The Saints game was pretty tough. We ended up playing well when we needed to. We ended up getting the win. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the way everything's playing right now. We're a good team. We're playing pretty well. And we're going to continue to play pretty well. I was reading some of the comments about who you guys thought maybe we should trade for or trade. Also, uh, co comments about my bouncing camera. Yeah, there's really not much I can do. I'm recording in the back of a moving 18-wheeler on I-35, somewhere between uh, Wichita, Kansas, and Oklahoma City right now. So there's not really much I can do about that. I'll talk to the driver maybe, but no, it certainly has nothing to do with my uh, ADHD and a bouncing knee on occasion. But I looked, I saw some decent suggestions. I'm just not really sure it makes a ton of sense to trade anybody right now. We're playing pretty well. We're getting B. John Robinson back from injury, which should be massive. And I'm going to want to extend Arnold Ebicady. We obviously made a trade for a new starting left tackle in Braxton Jones a week ago, or going into this week, I guess. Still have not advanced the week. And I don't really know what we would do other than upgrade at defensive tackle. I looked at some options, including bringing Grady Jarrett back, bringing in some like Tier Tart. It's expensive to trade for really any interior defensive lineman right now. It just doesn't make sense to trade for anybody. Aleem McNeil would really be the only one, and he's not as significant of an upgrade in Madden to what we actually have already. So we're just going to keep the team as it is. We're ready to go into week nine to play the San Francisco 49ers. They're always rated really, really, really well. And in my experience... They always play really, really, really badly. I mean, we've blown them out in the playoffs before. I don't know if Christian McCaffrey is going to be unstoppable today. I don't know if that's going to be a big difference from the previous seasons to this one. But I can tell you, this team historically has not caused us many problems. We've had tougher times against the Panthers and the Saints and the Bucks. The 49ers are the least of our problems. Also on these upgrades, some people have requested just showing it for a little bit longer. You can always just pause the video. That is an option. And unless it's really a significant upgrade, I usually just don't show the entire thing because not a lot's happening. It's just kind of wasted time in a way. It's like if they get plus one catching traffic, it's not really going to do a lot for the way a receiver plays the game, right? At the same time, like if a player gets plus one to speed or plus four to finesse moves or something like that, right? I'll say, ooh, plus one to speed, and I'll probably show that. For upgrades, we got Young Wei Koo. He's going to go up probably to an 85 overall. Accuracy, really not a problem for him, so I'm always looking to upgrade that power, although I doubt we get it. Although we do end up getting plus one to kick power and another ability slot, and he's already so good. We can see the entirety of the kicking arc. I love that. Can't get iced with clutch kicker and then zen kicker. Slower meter for better power and accuracy on kicks over 45 yards. Well, that seems pretty obvious. Focus kicker, what is that? Kicks over or up to. Uh, I see. Yeah, zen kicker, I guess, is fine. And then Jose Carrington, the exciting rookie out of Tennessee. Block shedding continues to need to go up going to be run stopper until we can get that probably close to the 80s we're still a while away only plus one there although this kicking meter goes so slow now so knowing how impatient i am i might just take it off but you know i guess it would be good for me to just slow things down a little bit i just struggle to do that i'm just extremely impatient i got tiktok brain now no attention span I can watch a video for a maximum of like one and a half seconds before I get bored. That's not true. And probably not true for a lot of you guys too if you watch this channel. The videos are long, generally. Let's see if we can play some defense. It's so difficult to tackle on NCAA 14 in space. Like, actually putting the player where you want them to be and then making the tackle, especially with the way the ball carrier moves in that game, it's nice to get back on Madden where it seems actually doable to get in position and then make the tackle. As we are pretty much able to do there. And it's third down and five already. Do have to be aware of McCaffrey as a receiver out of the backfield. We're in man coverage. And Purdy just able to quickly hit the receiver for the first down. It's actually DJ Chark has made his way to San Francisco. 
We run to the outside. McCaffrey actually goes back inside, and we over pursued, over committed to stopping the outside run. Gotta be mindful of the fact that Christian McCaffrey, some of the best vision in the game, if any's if anyone's able to hit a cutback lane for a big play, it's going to be him. Gotta be more mindful of that. Purdy under pressure. Down he goes. Football came out. Deion Dobbins with the stop. Picked up by Arnold Ebicady. This will be six. Arnold Ebicady with the touchdown. Deion Dobbins, the rookie out of LSU, came in flying after Brock Purdy. I'm pretty sure that football came out before Brock Purdy was on the ground. This should be a Falcons touchdown. Look at the top 10 pick. Deion Dobbins, oh, maybe not. That ball actually got flicked and kicked up into the air. This one might be coming back. Or it's not. We already got the PAT off. It's a touchdown. That looked a little bit closer on the replay, but they're going to call it a fumble and a scoop and score. Great start to this game. I'm telling you, the, the 49ers pose no threat. I don't know how these ass teams in the NFC South are more of a problem for us, but the 49ers, they are just not very good when you play against them. Now, it is early. It's been, what, three plays? But still, they've been a very unimpressive three plays for the 49er offense. It'll in motion. Could this be Wham? I love reading Wham, but I don't love making tackles. This Devin Singletary, another new 49er, goes up the gut and gets a big chunk play out of it. Debo Samuel into the backfield now. We have to be extremely mindful and aware of him. Is he going to get the football here? No. They just use him kind of as eye candy. And Purdy finds Ayuk for the first. That is the problem, though, with the 49ers. They have so many different players that can really hurt you. Just on the field right now. Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey, Kyle Juszczyk as the fullback was in there. And then... Of course, they brought in Devin Singletary. DJ Chark is somebody that can stretch the field, even if nothing else. Jose Carrington with roughing the passer, and the 49ers are now in great position to score as they're going to have first and 10 from the 34 after the 15-yard penalty. And they're showing no signs of slowing down now. I may have spoke too soon. Play action. Don't worry about it. Purdy going to take off. Somebody find him. Jesse Bates reacted just too slowly i hit r3 right stick in to send somebody after the quarterback and they were extremely delayed if it was jesse bates who was supposed to do it man he was slow to doing it it was not ideal throw over the middle caught by Ayuk. big hit holland but Ayuk goes down to the one all right we gotta we gotta reset here a little bit and figure out how to get back to you know the way we were playing on that first possession for the 49ers Here's going to be a run. Caden Ellis trying to get to it, but it's a great tackle by DeMarco Hellams. He comes in a lot in goal line packages, and he's pretty much been awful, but is able to make a nice play there. Caden Ellis is another one of those guys that comes in in goal line. Could be a fullback dive here to use check, although he's a little wide for it. Lineman is a little bit wide. Could just go straight to McCaffrey, and that's exactly where it goes. McCaffrey dancing, though, and dances into the end zone. All right, good drive from the Niners. Good way to bounce back for them. I may have spoke too soon. The Niners might actually be somebody worthy. See the last name on the jersey? Good of me to point that out. It might be worthy uh, of playing us pretty close. Being a worthy opponent. I don't know. Offense takes the field for the first time here with two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Bijan Robinson back. Of course, missed last week. And Tyler Algier played quite well, which I, I hype it up to be, oh my God, we lose B. John Robinson. But he's a good player. He's an 85 overall, obviously had a really good rookie season for the 49ers as well. You know, people are kind of wondering why they would take B. John Robinson. But it's just a case of he is a way more dynamic player. Like Algier was extremely successful in the offense that was power run oriented. It wasn't particularly special, but just could run straight pretty well powerful runner but Bijan does so many more things for you it's just the Falcons in real life until today don't really have any plans to use Bijan for some reason 
which makes you wonder why would they draft him number eight overall or number seven i think it was number eight number seven or no i think number eight number eight but you know what it's still early it's just, you can't really make up your mind about a player during their rookie season but anyway we'll run the ball successfully here Bijan off to a good start hit kyle pitts the play before for a nice play and it's second and seven throwing over the middle there's drake london and he can't catch it gotta be able to i think my depth chart reset did i reset my depth chart manually i don't really think so but i'm noticing a lot of the players aren't where they should be i prefer the team when pitts is in the slot and neil madsen's on the field here's third and seven i'm not loving our options lance has great speed i should have just thrown it to drummond in the end zone uh but we opt to hit the throw away instead of taking the sack and potentially making it a real deep field goal but probably should have just lobbed it to the end zone for drummond he ended up getting pretty open however you don't want to risk an interception a throw at a sack pick and then not get any points at all this way we at least get points on the board via young way coup and we'll retake the lead maybe we get to the 49ers by showing some more pressure I'm gonna bring those safeties up see how purdy reacts and he's just going to get rid of the football really quickly. How do we stop Brock Purdy? A question I never thought I'd be asking. But here we are. Third and three. Let's press. And let's force that football out quickly. But we're going to be right there. McCaffrey actually gets motioned out wide. Holland going to switch to Kittle. I don't love this. Oh, I'm not where I want to be. Oh my goodness. AJ Terrell got cooked. But Debo Samuel is overthrown by Purdy. Yeah, it could be pressure looks to try and force that football out early before Purdy wants to. Maybe force some inaccurate throws. That could be the way to do it. Because that second drive from them was really, really good. And uh, obviously don't want them to score a bunch of points today. Going to make it pretty tough for us to win if they score a lot. Our offense is a little wishy-washy. Madsen open, turn up field. Yeah, he's great. He's a great player. Obviously, if he was a little bit faster, I think that's a first down. Almost able to explode into that hole. This should actually be an RPO. I thought this was just going to be a run. Let me go ahead and change this. I want to hand it off to Bijan here. And I think we got just enough. Bijan made sure of it. This play is going to be amazing. Second and one. It's Drake London or Quentin Drummond. Just give us the time. It's actually going to be neither. It should have been Drummond. It should have been Drummond for sure. I got a little bit too, I'll say, scared to stretch the field. Just opted to kind of hit a check down to Kyle Pitts, although we still got a, a decent amount of yards there. Quentin Drummond ended up getting over, uh, or getting open on the over route because of the switch. I thought Hufunga was covering him, and then I kind of looked him off and thought Pitts was getting more open. But then Drummond is going to end up being naked. That probably is a touchdown. With his speed, that's probably a touchdown. Because London ended up getting double teamed. We're going to break that play out later in the game. And hopefully we get the same look. I don't do anything to help Bijan John Robinson there. But, oh man, that could have been amazing. It's just Hufunga kind of disguised coverage. I looked it off and then checked down and, oh gosh frustrating for sure there's madsen there's the explosiveness i was talking about earlier on the second down play to force third and short it's the explosiveness to like destroy the pursuit angle something you see brock bowers do the tight end at georgia a lot such a fun and special player robinson can't fool anybody her various ward right there to make that tackle it's got to be his own defense nobody covering drummond He's going to work as a beautiful lead blocker. Tyler Algier, broken tackle, and the Vulture is back. I mean, nobody does it more. He's not a Falcon. He's a Vulture. Vulturing all of Bijan Robinson's would-be touchdowns. Bijan does the work to get us down here, and Tyler Algier just finishes it off. Now, that's a nice run. That's not like a complete Vulture-type run. It wasn't like, okay, come in on the goal line and just punch it in for a yard that was actually a decent run but still fantasy owners of Bijan robinson real mad at that oh it's play action get out to mccaffrey or 
That's open as Purdy does what I can't with Trey Lance. 49er return for Trey Lance. It's a revenge game playing the team that drafted him and the quarterback that ended up stealing the starting job. Storyline I have not hyped up nearly enough today. And now Purdy is able to stretch the field when uh, Trey Lance was not able to. Although Trey Lance is not making his own decisions, it's me, unfortunately. Throw over the middle. It's I you know it's Debo Samuel. Broken tackles for Samuel. Speed to the open field. Gone. That's the problem with a guy like Debo Samuel. Playing against him if you don't tackle him the first or even the second time. He's got enough speed to burn you. And uh, obviously is so adept at forcing missed tackles. Stanley tried to go for the pick. Holland with the hit stick. Carrington dove and missed. And then nobody could catch him. I mean, okay. The Niners came to play today. I thought they didn't based on that opening drive. We looked like we were going to dominate. And then they flipped a switch. They're getting their playmakers the football. And they have a lot of them. They really, really do. Everyone on offense is somebody to worry about. That's the big thing. Keontae Talley, the seventh round rookie running back with a return. Trying to get him on the field a little bit more. Oh, Lance on the move. Oh my God, Trey Lance. 19 yard rush. I didn't actually think there was much there. Lance is just too fast. Bijan, wide open. Turn up the field. Bijan Robinson could house it. And it's a house call for Bijan here in Atlanta. Seven for number seven. Bijan Robinson, man. Such an amazing receiver. His numbers are going to be so incredible this season as well. He had some slow starts on the ground, but really started to pick it up as the season has gone on and has obviously been a great receiver for us. He's a big part of our offense. We get him the football a lot through the air, and sometimes it's check downs, and sometimes it really is throws down the field, and Bijan comes up clutch. Wide open, coverage breakdown from the 49ers, and a good enough throw from Trey Lance. We retake the lead instantly. Second and 10, under a minute to play now in this first half. It's been a good first half as well. Purdy with a check down to McCaffrey. Good tackle from Deshaun Humphreys. That is not an easy open field tackle to make. D Hump is able to do it. We need to make sure to get some depth here with Stanley. Don't let them throw over you. Under pressure again, and down goes Purdy. It's Arnold Ebicady who adds a sack to his scoop and score. Great game so far for Ebicady. And we call a timeout. We want the football back. 35 seconds, 30 seconds with the football may be enough to get in a field goal range, especially considering we have an electric return man in Rashid Shahid or not. We ran the ball on, on first down. I know it seems crazy. It's to set up the play action pass. And Quinton Drummond, ball hanging up there. Drummond caught it. Final timeout. If Trey Lance had a bit more time, that would have been a nice play. Well, an even bigger play, I should say, for Quentin Drummond. Ends up being a nice play nonetheless. Uh, actually, I was going to streak Madsen. We can go over the middle of the field here. Quick spike, field goal. But if we try to get out of bounds, we might actually be able to score a touchdown. It's just uh, unlikely. Third and three. Can't take a sack here. Thrown to the end zone for Drummond. Oh, it's nearly caught off the tip. Caden Stearns knocked it up into the air. And it hit Drummond right in the hands. He couldn't catch it. We took a shot to the end zone. And we're going to settle for a field goal try. It's 57 yards. But this really shouldn't be a problem. For Young Waku, especially with his new kicking superstar ability. I mean, it's guaranteed to go in. Essentially, when it's that slow, and we can see the arc. We can see he clearly has the range. Accuracy was never going to be a problem. Power, never going to be a problem. And we're up pretty big here to end the first half. 27 of 14. We've played well. Nearly 200 first half passing yards. And we've been okay on the ground as well. We just really haven't gone to it as much. Now, Bijan's been stopped a couple of times for little to no gain. Which is fine. But if they're going to be exposed on the back end, we're going to keep passing... All gas, no breaks. Let's go. Second half officially underway. Keontae Talley gets us started. 
And it uh, looked like there might have been a little bit of daylight up the middle. Not able to hit it. Second and six. Who wants to get open? Drummond is wide open. Off his back foot, though, was Trey Lance. It's crossbody. It's picked. And it's going all the way. Pick six. Drummond could not have been more open. Lance did not set his feet. Um... Yeah, I mean, on a play-action boot like that, I just, I kind of thought at the end of his drop, he was just going to stop moving, and he just, I, I'm not holding down here. I can promise you I'm not holding down. But it, it's like I was, because he sprints back here and then throws crossbody behind him. I mean, it, it really, it's so open. I was not holding down, I promise you. I don't know why he sprints down before throwing the ball. Especially when I'm past leading up. It makes no sense. 49ers right back in the game. I, I'm not going to take responsibility for that. And I know. When it's my fault, I probably don't always take responsibility. I think I do, but I probably, I probably there's some moments where I think it's not my fault and it probably is. That one was not my fault. I, there's no way I could have predicted an off-balance uh, throw there. I don't, I don't know why it was the case. It was d disgusting. Now, a fun way to look at that is it's another touchdown for Trey Lance. Wow. Man, is he playing great. All right, we're going to try that play again. It came up in coach suggestions. We're going to run it. This time, I am moving. We're going to throw on the run for Drake London. London's able to make a man miss, and Drake London with the extra yardage down inside 49er territory. Okay. Some people wanted Drake London to get traded. He's playing better of late. I know he's not a huge, like, focal point of the offense or anything, but he doesn't have to be. I know he's not exactly matching his value, but he's been good lately. Second and 12, probably not a run spot. We'll see if play action fools them. It doesn't really, and we just got to throw the ball on the run there and risk it being inaccurate. Because when you set your feet in that spot and throw... You're just opening yourself up to a hit from behind. Here's third and 12. Still in field goal range. This isn't really so bad. Actually, Bijan on a Texas ride here could be sick. Take the angle up. Everything else is going towards the other side of the field. Bijan wide open. It works perfectly. Bijan makes some man miss. He makes some man miss. Uh, in his end to end zone touchdown. He makes some men miss, but that sounds weird. <laughs> He made some defenders whiff. That's sick. Like, you wouldn't expect the juke to the outside there based on his momentum, but he's able to fool him. Gets outside, gets up, and gets in. Two-point conversion makes it a two-touchdown game, 35-21. And we'll see who gets open. Slant, open, missed. It's 33-21. Second receiving touchdown of the game for Bijan Robinson, by the way. He's probably up near 100 yards if he's not over at this point. Because that was, what, near a 30-yard touchdown? Something like that. His touchdown prior was probably in the neighborhood of 50, right? I can't remember exactly, but something like that. And have we thrown it to him in other spots? It's possible. He's probably near 100, if I had to bet. Three for 92 and two touchdowns, in case you cared. Now, I want to rewind to this play here. Because Madden 24 is supposed to be the hit everything, right? It's all about hit everything. Hit everything. Well, playing over the middle. Little quick drop. It's a slant to Ayuk, who takes a little bit of it from Carrington. And then is hit-sticked by Humphreys, but seemingly has no reaction to it. Right? Like, that left shoulder comes slightly back, and then he's wrapped up by Phillips. But you wouldn't really be wrapped up in that spot. You'd be exploding backwards if you're taking a hit stick across the middle like that. It just, it looks so weird. They gotta figure out momentum in this game. I don't mean momentum like they're momentum factors. I mean, actually. Because... Oh, jeez. It, and it didn't matter for much, right? But just in terms of visual appearance, he shouldn't just be wrapping up and falling forward a bit there. He should be getting jacked up towards the line. There should be penalties for catching the football over the middle of the field. You kind of saw it there. It's unfortunate, but 
I almost wish that injuries were a bigger part. Ah, oh, jeez, as McCaffrey gets in the end zone. I almost wish injuries were a, bitter, a bigger part of Madden because they're such a big part of football. And if you get jacked up over the middle, you're probably going to sit out of play. And you, just, you don't see that in Madden. I know the NFL doesn't want injuries really to be in the game, especially not head injuries. But I don't know. It feels like players just eat hit sticks like they are nothing in this game done a really phenomenal job of blowing this game or maybe even more than blowing it not extending our lead Bijan hasn't been great on the ground 11 carries for 39 yards it's not something I can consistently go to although obviously on first and 10 we get nine yards we're gonna go back to the run on second and one I guess maybe not obviously because that is a play action spot for me depending on where we are in the field but this far backed up I will usually opt to just keep it on the ground Try to get the first down. Plenty of time left in this game, so I'm not exactly trying to just chew clock. We have a whole fourth quarter to go. It's a close game. You never know what's going to happen. We're just focused on scoring a touchdown. Getting the offense off the field, but with seven points on the board. Would be ideal. Might even go for two. We'll see. We throw over the middle. There's Drummond. He gets rocked over the middle. CPU catches that. Who's in the slot on Drummond? This could end up being great for us. Actually going to drop back with the pit's motion. We're going to take a shot down the field. Quentin Drummond outrun him, and he does! It's Drummond! Touchdown! It was Jair Brown in the slot, the safety. A decent athlete, but doesn't have anywhere near the speed to cover Quentin Drummond. And it actually looked like he did a pretty good job of staying in phase. But it was a couple steps at the very top, at the catch point, where Quinton Drummond is able to create some extra separation and get down the field successfully and obviously catch the football in stride to put an exclamation point on the end of this third quarter. It's going to be 40-28, to 12-point game. Niners obviously still very much in this, and it's really just been quick strikes by each team. There have been very few long drives that have you've resulted in scores. It's been a lot of five plays, two minutes, touchdown. Three plays, 77 yards, touchdown, right? Seven plays, a minute and 40 seconds, touchdown. Under pressure, down goes Purdy. Deion Dobbins again. Uh, this is a breakout game for him. Gotta love it. Third time Purdy's been sacked in this one. And only on a four-man rush as well. That's what's most encouraging. That's the entire reason why we drafted Deion Dobbins. We could never get pressure with, with just a four-man rush. We would have to blitz. Oh, my goodness. We get the sack, but you know what? The 49ers strike back in an instant. Ayuk over 130 yards receiving, and they're instantly back into Falcon territory. Ayuk just torched our DBs. I think it was Okuda in coverage. I know he ended up making the tackle. We could have been in his zone. I simply don't remember. And McCaffrey's still going to be on his feet. Still going and into the end zone for the score. Yeah, I mean, it's been the case the entire game. I don't know if it's just tackling that's a huge issue. Or the angles. Or players getting over the top in the case of Ayuk. I don't know what happens here. We got a guy right on him. And he just... Listen, Jesse Bates... Credit to him there because not a lot of players could make this play. Not only does Jesse Bates not make the tackle on Christian McCaffrey, he does a phenomenal job of holding back the entire rest of my team for making the tackle. He throws a mean block onto Dylan Stanley. You know what this looks like? is Cronwall, the Detroit Red Wings defender. I don't watch hockey, but I have seen Cronwall highlights where he just throws his back into players and they get lit up. Jesse Bates does a great impression of it. Throws his back, blocks off Dylan Stanley, who blocks off to Sean Humphreys. It's a conga line of idiocy. Javon Holland blocked out of the way. Maurice Hurst blocked out of the way. And McCaffrey doesn't have to do much. It looked like he broke seven tackles. He just shoved Jesse Bates to the ground, which is not impressive. Three plays, 76 yards, a minute and 18 seconds. I'm telling you, it's quick strikes in this game that's been the difference. And... All gas, no brakes. We're going to have to keep it up. 
We've allowed 35 points and we're not even losing. That's pretty incredible. We actually did run the ball from this spot earlier. Second and three, we're gonna try a pass. Works beautifully. It's an easy, quick pass to Neil Madsen. And it, I call those runs a lot of the time because they basically act like runs. They're really quick passes, wide open receivers behind the line of scrimmage pretty often. First and 10, six and a half minutes to play. Protection looks great. Pitch is open, get up the field. We'll take that. I just, my receivers on those routes just got so caught up. They couldn't get out of their breaks at all. Drake London, I mean, technically, we got the ball at the 41. All right, so I guess the second hit is not actually a defensive holding or pass interference. It occurs within five yards, so that's clean. But he couldn't get out of his break. Drummond is just pushed into a defender. He couldn't get into his route. And by the time they're actually into their routes and open, we're already on the ground, basically. So, just unfortunate. We're going to get crazy. We're going to streak Bijan. Kyle Pitts is open, though. Great throw, great route. Big way to move the chains in that spot. A touchdown could really ice things here. Let's go ahead and go chew clock. Try to burn it a bit more. I guess Pitts got out of bounds under five minutes, so the clock is stopped momentarily. Up the middle, Algier just search for contact. Hit somebody. Three rushes for 37 yards and a touchdown. He's been a great change of pace back today. We'll play action. Throw to Algier anyway. He's no B. John Robinson in the pass game, that's for sure. I love getting two tight ends out here. But Pitts in the slots is or Pitts in the slot is so great. Third and five. Who wants to get open? Drummond? Sits down, gets a block, diving, and scores. That could be the dagger here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Quentin Drummond. Just a great way to find the open space to beat the zone coverage and then to actually turn up field and dive into the end zone. Great athleticism. Madsen lays a key block on Fred Warner as well. And we're going to make things 47 to 35. Three minutes to play. We're just about. Full timeouts for the 49ers as well. Here's what I wonder. Is there even enough time? I would say yes, only because of how quickly we've allowed touchdowns today. But if we're able to obviously get a stop, it's game over. No question. I think it's four down territory for them. You never know with the Madden CPU. It probably should be, but we'll see. As long as we can keep them in front of us, I think we win this game. We're going to drop back. I'm okay with allowing yards on this drive. There's not too many of them. Not like 10 apiece. Ideally, they get five to six per play, and I'd be you know, pretty happy with that. Fine, we love that. That's perfect. That's not perfect, though. Brandon Ayuk down the field. Catch and broken tackle and extra yards. And there's the two-minute warning. I still feel like we're fine. But I really would like this clock to be under a minute. That'd be best for me. Birdie on the run. We'll just throw over the middle. We vacated. I thought he was going to scramble. Okay, that's fine. Clock's going to tick, though. A minute and 40 seconds. Let's go QB contain. Let's see if we can get a rush. Throw over the middle. Complete to Kittle. Touchdown. Good good stuff. They're not going onside. They've, they've kicked the ball immediately before we could go and call a timeout. But they kick it way too deep. So, touchback is fine. Is this going to be three straight runs? Definitely a possibility of that happening. Putting Fred Warner basically a nose tackle. Could be a mistake, and it is. B. John Robinson gains 10. We're just about at second and inches. And first down ends it here. Get a yard. There it is. And more. B. John Robinson to the 45. That should be it. B. John, more space. Suddenly, B. John's able to run the ball. Unstoppable right now with Freight Train. And he, he's going to have 
an amazing game when it's all said and done with these garbage time yards. And it might be another touchdown for Bijan. We're not going to stop him. Yeah, the 49ers theoretically increase their chances to win with allowing a touchdown there because they can actually, in theory, score, get an onside score, whereas we could have just iced the game. But you know what? Bijan Robinson adds to his Offensive Player of the Year resume. 54-42, and I think our highest scoring game of the entire series with points allowed and scored. This is incredible. But I, I mean, the 49ers, to their credit, played way better offensively than I thought they would. But defensively, they were really, really bad. We scored 54 points. Throwing deep. Terrell intercepted. And that is the ball game. I mean, it looked like A.J. Terrell ran a great route there. Great throw from Purdy. Ayuk's over 200 yards, by the way, but we're not really going to worry about that. We should have moved Terrell onto him, but also part of the reason Debo Samuel didn't do a whole lot this game is because Debo Samuel was mostly covered by A.J. Terrell. This time, it's Ayuk running into Terrell's zone, and uh, Terrell does a good job to stack the receiver, make a play in the football. Bijan's been incredible. We have the ball on the four, so we could kneel it down, but... CPU wants us to run it out, so who am I to stop them? Here's Bijan, and that is your final snap of this football game. Unless Bijan's really close to 100, but he should be over. 136. So that is your ball game. I'm not going to snap it. I'm not going to. I thought about it. I'm not going to snap it. I'm not going to snap it. 54 42 is your unbelievably high scoring final. This was, this was a game. It was a fun one because there's a lot of offense, but there was a lot going on. Our defense needs to step up. Lance, 18 for 25, four touchdowns, and five if you count the interception return to the house. So sick. This could have been an amazing game if not for that. And it, it was still, but even more so if Trey Lance didn't throw off his back foot for no reason. Purdy annihilated us today. He was incredible. Very similar games for both quarterbacks. Interception at the end there for Purdy. Kind of hurts his line. McCaffrey averaged close to 10 per carry. Three touchdowns. Four broken tackles. This was an annoying one. Bijan was great. Tyler Algier I thought was pretty great. But the blocking is always so good for him. And then receiving. Ayuk rushed us. That was a problem. Debo Samuel didn't do a whole lot. Just 139-yard play. And then that was pretty much it. But for us, Drummond goes over 100. Two touchdowns. Would have been even more if not for that throw off the back foot problem. Bijan, three for 92. Two touchdowns. What a game from him. Kyle Pitts led us in catches. Neil Madsen not too far behind. And... Just a great performance overall. We had a lot of different receivers involved. I mean, how many is this? Eight different players with a catch. And then defensively, Epicady, two TFLs. Same for Dobbins, both one and a half sacks. TFL for Helms, pick at the end for Terrell. And then the force fumble for Deion Dobbins was recovered by Epicady. They worked beautifully today. Epicady with a touchdown as well. Who do you even highlight in this game as the player of the game? I don't know. Quentin Drummond gets an upgrade. Medium route running is not great. And that is, I think, a decent part of his game. I'm going to upgrade, I think, Deep Threat. That's mainly how we use him and mainly how I want to use him. Obviously, underneath could be good as well. Plus two agility, awareness, and catching. 95 agility is really nice. Juke move is not so high. Not an awful upgrade, I suppose. And then Bijan's already, like, what do you even do? We can only upgrade receiving back. He is a beast. I mean, such an amazing player. Bijan Robinson ended up being your player of the game. That makes sense when you have 136 yards on the ground, rushing touchdown, and then three catches for 92 yards and two touchdowns. Although, I really think you could have given it to Trey Lance. Drummond for us had a big game, but I'm talking about player of the game. I don't mean who put up the best numbers because Lance and Bijan were right there, but who had the biggest impact? Was it Arnold Evocati? Was it Deion Dobbins? Bijan Robinson, Trey Lance, Quentin Drummond was great today. 
starting to really come along as a rookie. We're 7-2 and two now. Big win. Got to keep it moving. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.